Sean and Cecily here with another Trans Girl CNC, where we talk about comics, cartoons, and other awesome nerd shit. So, the video is a little late, and I apologize for that. There are reasons behind that, but I really don't want to get into that because I just kind of want to get into the topic at hand because there's a lot to unpack, a lot to get through. But before we do that, we are going to take a look at something that you might have missed out on. This is, of course, a thing that I've taken a look into that I was like, huh, other people might enjoy this, but they might not have seen it, so here it is. And this week is no exception. It is Plutona from Image Comics, so it kind of fits into our theme a little bit as it is a story about growing up coming of age. Uh, it's about a group of kids who discover a dead body. Not just any dead body, but the dead body of the most important, most well-known, most powerful superhero on their planet. And because of her high status, they decide that amongst themselves they're going to keep her death a secret. They're not going to move the body, they're not going to alert the, the authorities, because if word got out that she was gone, villains would run amok. And because other heroes just aren't equipped to deal with them, because Plutona is the best. And so the story isn't necessarily about her dead body or the consequences of her death, so much as it is about the consequences of their decision uh, amongst them, about holding that secret, what it does to them personally, how it affects their psyche. And so uh, this is why I kind of want to issue a warning that this is a very heavy book to read. It contains, obviously, things of death, uh, violence towards children, from children, and lots of blood. But if those things don't bother you, or if you think you can power through them, definitely give this a read because it is worth checking out. So, it's Plutona from Image. Definitely give it a look. But let's get on to our main topic. Our main topic this week is Digimon Adventure Try. Now, some of you might not know what Digimon is. I mean, or at least what why we call it Digimon Adventure Try. Uh, a lot of my viewers, or some of my viewers, might not be old enough to remember the original Digimon series because it was released in the early 2000s. So you might remember things like Digimon Fusion, which came out on Nickelodeon, and maybe even Digimon Frontier, which was so weird. That was like, I didn't much care for that one. But if you liked it, I'm glad for you. Um, <laughs> but Digimon Adventure was the original. It came out in the early 2000s as part of a deal, as part of a toy deal with Bandai. Uh, there used to be little handhelds called Digimon. You could link them and they would fight, but they decided to give it a bigger story to sell more of these little toys. And, well, those toys didn't sell very well, but they did make a pretty solid anime. Now, of course, this was during the time, and it was, this is during the time where anime was just getting popular in the United States, so they're basically grabbing whatever they could and throwing it against the wall and see if it sticks. Because, you know, because Pokemon, Sailor Moon, Dragon Ball Z, those had done really well in the States. And so, especially with Pokemon, we thought, oh, Pokemon, Digimon, same kind of concept, you know, little creatures that fight. So we'll pick this up, slap a dub onto it, throw it against the wall, see if people take it. And if they do, we can, you know, do more with it. We can sell toys, etc., blah, blah, blah. And they did sell some toys. Those toys were kind of cool. But it didn't ever get quite as popular as Pokemon because it did have that comparison, which is weird because the two shows aren't very alike at all. Uh, yes, there are children. Yes, there are little creatures. Yes, those creatures do fight each other. But whereas Pokemon's about, you know, getting more monsters, training them, battling other monsters, getting prestige and recognition in that sort of sense, Digimon is about saving the world. It's literally about saving the world. You save the digital world to save the real world because the digital world's problems are the real world's problems. Or they become the real world's problems, I should say. The first series was Digimon Adventure, which followed a small group of kids who went on a went to summer camp, right? And so one day weather goes crazy, there's a snowstorm in the middle of summer, and they wake up in the digital world. And then they're greeted by their Digimon. Each kid is called a Digidestin. They're basically destined with this burden to save the digital world and the world overall. And they're each given a partner Digimon. Just one Digimon. They don't collect a team of these creatures and go off and fight. Um, nothing like that. And basically, unlike Pokemon where it's like experience times 
time times, you know, whatever, makes stronger Pokemon, gets bigger Pokemon of evolution. Digi evolution is a little different in that it's more about heart and energy. Uh, the more, the stronger the bond between the Digi Destin and their Digimon allows them to create a better Digi evolution. So you have your baby stages, you have your rookie stage, which is kind of like a childlike stage. Then you have champion, uh, which is more of an adult stage. And beyond champion, there is ultimate, and then mega. And then there are even crazier things beyond that uh, with fusion and such. Which I'm getting a little ahead of myself. Now the reason the new series is called Digimon Adventure Tri is because it's actually taking place after Digimon Adventure 2, which was still part of the overall Digimon Adventure series, which the second season they focused on a new set of kids, plus the two youngest members of the original team. Now, as I mentioned, it was this big story about saving the world. And even when it was just the original kids, it was about saving the world. First from Devamon, then Edamon, Myotismon, the Sovereigns, and so on and so forth. They just kept getting bigger with better evolutions, and it was great. The dub itself, not so great. Not so good at all. It was a very questionable dub, so I didn't... But when you're a kid in the early 2000s, you take whatever they give you, because we didn't have big streaming sites, there was no Crunchyroll... You know, if you wanted, like, a sub from Japan, you paid a guy at a convention to give you a VHS tape. And hopefully it was what you paid for. So, it was a wild time back in the day to watch anime off, off TV. If you didn't want to watch whatever dub they were doing, it was hard to do at all. Especially fan subs that you could find online. They were bad and miss mistranslated it was bad so you basically we're stuck with really one thing the reason i mentioned that the dub itself is bad is because digimon in and of itself is kind of a serious show and even as an adult now i didn't realize how serious serious it was because i had only ever watched the dub now I, there are definitely serious moments that are still in the english version but in the english version those serious moments are often undercut by a uh, ad-lib joke. Because in the early 2000s, cartoons were exclusively seen for children, especially big cartoons with, you know, that are super bright and colorful like Digimon, uh, this is totally for children, and so we have to make it appeasing to them. We can't upset them. They didn't go to the Don Bluth school of storytelling. You know, Don Bluth is a crazy, crazy man. Uh, I love him. But he's crazy. So you would have very serious scenes where a Digimon would die. Literally die. This is not like, oh, they're injured and they'll come back one day. No, they are dead. Dead as dead can be. Like, a good example is a Digimon named Waymon. It's a whale, Digimon. And the Digi doesn't make friends with that, but with him. And he takes them you know, where they kind of need to go for a while. And he makes a reappearance later on in the show, but is killed by one of the sovereign evil Digimon. Like, a hole is cleanly blasted through this guy, and in the Japanese version, apparently, nothing's kind of said. It's just kind of like, you know, shock and awe. But in the American version, there's the offhanded comment like, oh, you can't fix that with a Band-Aid. Like, so, it's was a really questionable dub just in the way they felt that they had to lighten every scene with a joke that just wasn't there in the original taping, or with even some of the ways they did dub the lines. Like, for example, when Anjumon appears, uh, instead of Mimi saying that, wow, he looks like an angel, she says, I like his hair, great color. It's real, that was really, that's weird. It's weird. The names themselves are kind of weird, too. Just kind of the names they chose to keep versus the ones that they changed. For example, Mimi, Sora, and Joe are all 
have the same names between the two versions, whereas Taichi, Hikari, Yamato, Takaru, uh, their names were changed to be more American, I guess? I mean, they changed Yamato to Matt, which obviously more American, but they changed Taichi to Tai, which is kind of lazy, and Takato from Takaru, so it's like some of their choices were just very interesting and didn't make a whole lot of sense. There's a the car going, marking the time. Sorry, I still have to do my job while I record this because I don't make enough money from these videos. Yet. Maybe. Anyway, so that's, that's kind of the dub. So it's really weird that I have a nostalgic sense of feeling, nostalgic feelings for it. It's weird that this is still in my top 20 anime of all time, the original does, because they were not good. They were like an abridged series before an abridged series existed. But I still love it. I still love the second adventure. I don't know those kids as well. Like, I know Cody, and I know Davis, who is apparently Dyson in the Japanese version. But I can't really remember the girl's name, and that always makes me feel bad. I could have looked it up, but I didn't. Um, speaking of which, so... The way the second series ends, which is, of course, part of the bigger story from the first season, and I mention that is because in later seasons aren't connected at all, except for Digimon Adventure Tribal. We'll get to that. The reason I mention the original series and the original kids versus is because the way the second series ended, uh, the digital world and the human world end connected, totally connected. And so when the third series starts, which takes place... Three, which takes place three years after the second series, um, the, the worlds have been closed off from each other. And nobody knows why, but it doesn't really matter because life marches on. And then infected Digimon start popping up, and it's up to the heroes, the original heroes, step in with their Digimon, who also come back from the digital world, you know, start, you know, to, to to fight these infected Digimon, to push them back, and to solve this problem. Now, in the middle of all of this, we've got to save the world. We got, you know, fight infected Digimon. There's plots about, you know, growing up. What does it mean to grow up? What does it mean to be a kid? Um, sort of thing. For example, Tai Chi is not sure that what they're doing is right anymore, fighting other Digimon, because it causes destruction. This was kind of a problem that Matt had, in, or sorry, Yamato had in the original series with, you know, what we're doing is dangerous and it could endanger my brother. And it seems like their attitudes are sort of flipped around and it's kind of weird. On top of that, they're both pursuing Sora and she kind of always feels in the middle of things like she has to be the mom of the group. And then there's Joe. Joe is basically, for the most part of this show, abandoned the team because he's got finals, he's got college, and even though the serious thing is showing up, he doesn't understand why he is a Digi-Destin, why he was chosen, why this should be his problem, because they've already saved the world once, why do they have to do it again? This isn't fair. And so we have these themes of adult of adulthood coming in, like what is important to growing up, Do should we grow up, what do we need to do, what should we be doing? And while that's going on, there's another plot about a government organization whose job it is to kind of deal with these digital threats. And they kind of have their own motives, but they still need the DigiDestin to do things, but they, like, they have their own motives. And they're not being forthcoming about those motives. And sometimes things don't add up, don't go right. Uh, they're not giving the kids all the information they need to handle the situation. And that is especially true in, in terms of the new character, Maiko and her digi partner Digimon, Meikoma. Uh, because there's, she's, that Digimon, Meikoma, is super important to the story. I mean, I don't really want to give too much away, but she is basically center focus of the story in more ways than one. And there's a reason for that, and the government agency knows why and why these things are happening and why and how to kind of how to solve them, but they're not being forthcoming. They're not telling them everything. And so it's kind of like they're just trying to do 
what they've done with in terms of fighting Digimon, but it's not working and they don't know why. They don't know why these infections are happening. So you see uh, characters like Koshiro, who is called Izzy in the in the American version. Uh, his name is like Izumi, Izumi or yeah, like Izumi or Iziru. And so they call him Izzy, but everybody calls him Koshiro because it's his last name. I don't know why either. But so he's running himself around in circles because he's like the smart computer guy. And he's trying to figure out, you know, how to stop the infection. Can our Digimon get infected? What happens if they get infected? And, like, it's a very emotional show. I had cried at least six times watching this because there's just so many touching moments. There's a moment, like I said, I don't want to give too much away. There is a moment where their Digimon do get infected. And so... But they're, you know, they're working and fighting off the infection and, you know, still trying to do uh, what they've always done, protect their kids, but they're having trouble doing it. And Tentamon, who belongs to Goshiro, is like the last one to kind of be there to kind of have control over himself. And so he gets to his final mega form and he's trying to push the Digimon back into the digital world as things are going to be rebooted. And there's a touching line about it's okay to say... Uh, goodbye, like this, right? Because once the digital world gets rebooted, he won't remember Koshiro. They won't remember their partners anymore. And so it's like, ah! Like, I really cried. Because it's a very touching moment. Like, I'm almost crying now. And I don't want to cry on camera, so I'm not going to. Um, the sh it isn't over, though. The whole thing isn't over. Like, they went to the digital, digital world to find their partners again, and a big thing happened, and the final movie... Digimon Adventure Future is coming out this year, May 5th, and I'm so excited to watch it. I hope you are too. I just have so many feelings and emotions about this show and about these movies, so let me know what you think. Uh, comment down below. Message me on Twitter. Like, I should probably start posting that under here. Um, do, you know, get in touch with me. What are your feelings on it? Maybe I'll do a follow-up video. Next, for the midweek, to kind of get more into, like, some of the theories that I have or some of the other plot points that I want to talk about. But the video is kind of quickly coming to an end, and I need to sort of wrap this up. So, I'm Fire Princess Lily, and until next time, enjoy cartoons, enjoy comics. Said that backwards. It doesn't matter. But I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.